All right, so showing up early for my soccer match tonight, and you can see the wet slick right there. I'm idling in, coming down this hill to go park in there, and I just blew my upper radiator hose off the car and decided to spit all my coolant out. What in the world is this? Just went right in. By the time I got to here, there's no more coolant for it to spray. That is bizarre. Actually, it stopped right there, but when I came in here to the covered parking, it started up again right here. Spackle, 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 spackle. This is amazing. You can see here where I pulled in. Now we got two streams, mostly one on the right. And then I backed up, pulled in. I went forward just a little bit to get the angle right so I wouldn't hit that post. Came back into my parking spot where I discovered the upper radiator hose was completely off and the reservoir was empty. Interesting. All right, so I'm going to, um, I don't know if it was the clamp there. You can just see it right there. That clamp. Yep, that little bolt right there. Um, you can just see it looks like it uh, it decided to loosen up um, because when it came off and I went this the um, this was completely empty. Um, I was able to just slide that back on so easily, like it had just expanded and the clamp wasn't really holding it tight. So I'm not sure if that just loosened up and it's a bad clamp. Uh, but I'm definitely going to be, I'm going to, I was, uh, here, let me show you how I actually hooked that up. But you can see, i got to clean this off. I'm going to pull it out and wash it off. It's got antifreeze all over the place. Um, it's wet underneath. Um, but it drove home the whole way, 20 miles from South Denver on I-25, Santa Fe, US-36, all the way home to Louisville last night with Hot Mama Cita following me in the Floki van. Um, everything made it home fine. Pulled over a couple times and just refilled this up as it was sucking more through. Uh, but made it home and it is still on the pretty much max setting. So it's good. I just need to figure out what the hell happened here to make this fly off in the first place. So I had purchased this little roadside emergency kit. Uh, yeah, that's little, I got this at Walmart. I was small, I could throw it in the back on the uh, little storage tray. And a little flashlight, that was a lifesaver last night. So what I was able to do was take um, this little ratchet on its shortest setting, which it is because that thing that this, um, this core will extend out quite a bit. Um, and then put this adapter in and then this 930 seconds. Whatever this one was, I lost. And maybe it's still in there. I'm going to go looking for it with a magnet. But it fell down in there. But the 930 seconds was able to mount up on that. And I was able to just barely barely get this in with the band sitting where it's at it needs to be a little bit further forward but I was barely able to get it in where it's at just on the I don't know it's in there by maybe three-eighths of an inch it needs to go further in um, but I was able to get that ratchet in there and just swing it like maybe three clicks and just keep tightening 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 um, it is tight enough it is not pulling off it didn't pull off when it was hot last night when I first did it and then we refilled it when the game was over last night with Hot Mama C to bring me more of the stuff. Yeah, so I now have two of those are empty. I don't know why I had two of them opened up. They both had about three liters in them. Um, and now I got two more. Um, I can assure you those are going in the back of the car for the drive on Saturday down to the Skyline Drive in Canyon City. So they will be in the trunk with me just in case. But I'm going to clean all this off. I'm going to... This one I mounted incorrectly. I don't know how the hell I'm ever going to tighten that if it loosens up so all this is going to have to come back off that was a big mistake it should be on the other side um even on the other side i'm not really sure i can get to it but uh yeah we're going to come up with some way to check that that one's tight i pulled on it earlier it is all the way on and tightened but the other blue hose i put in we're going to check that one to see if it's loosening up um, but this one i read online that these are kind of prone to doing that and it might be the band so um not sure what happened but we're going to keep an eye on it here for the next several weeks all right, she's all back. She's rinsed off, pulled back in, up on ramps. I'm going to go in here and check all the hoses. But I can't point out enough how lucky I was last night. It was over 95, 98 degrees when I was driving to that game. I was driving down a downhill school access road at Denver Christian School, slowing down for a speed bump when it let loose. You saw that on the video where the trail happened right before the speed bump and then right after it all let loose. Um, so I'm not sure what caused that, but luckily I was not 
under load. I was pulling into an underground or a covered parking garage underneath the school building and it let loose all its coolant. It did not overheat. Um, it holds, I looked it up, 8.8 liters and we put in almost six last night. So it had poured out, just shot it everywhere all of that coolant on the ground in that video that you saw. So we're really lucky, um, can't believe I didn't overheat this car. Was really worried it would overheat on the way home, if it would blow the hose again. Mama, Mama Cita, hot Mama Cita followed me all the way home, we made it. So we're just trying to figure out what the hell is going on with this hose, hopefully it doesn't happen again. But it all wasn't good luck. I had parked, in that video you'll see I was parked really close to a pillar support for the roof of that parking garage for the building. And when I turned to pull out of my parking lot, I rubbed it. It had a square base at the round, at the base of the round pillar. And my new wheels got all scuffed up. I rubbed it nice and slow so I didn't bend any rim or anything like that. Drove fine on the way home, but I definitely scuffed my wheels. So it wasn't all wonderful. Hot Mama Cita's words when I did that and I got out of the car making an ugly face. Hot Mama Cita's words were like, thank God that was you and not me. And I told her, yep, I agree. Thank God it was me who did that because I can only be mad at myself. So, all right, I've got it back on. You can see the clamp. I've moved a little bit further and rotated it up. Um, it works with this. It is a seven millimeter on the clamp uh, bolt. So with this little knuckle, I can get in there with this little stubby, get in there just above like this and make it work. Um, I tried with the seven millimeter to see if I could sneak in here and check this one. I pulled on it really hard. This one has not moved. It has a longer nub than the radiator does to grab. Um, so I think this one's on there good. I can get the box end in. I can get it barely on, but I can't rotate it. So if this needs to be tightened up, I'm gonna have to remove the power steering pump. So that was not a good placement of that. Um, I guess I should have put it up above. I'm not really sure even if it was there. I, I could probably swing it here. So yeah, that should have been where I put it. So if I ever have to redo this, that's where it's gonna go. I'm gonna reverse that. Yeah, that wasn't smart. So it was a lot easier to do when this wasn't in the way. Didn't think that through. So now I'm gonna go underneath and check the other ones. All right, so I got the car up on ramps. So I really can't get under here very well to give you a good view, but I did loosen up this clamp and it's also the seven millimeter. It came with the hoses from IPD and with one hand, pushed this hose all the way back into the stops. It was just a little bit off of its stop, tightened it back up really good. But I did notice right here, you can see it in the video, the lower return out of the radiator. So for the coolant antifreeze going back to the engine comes out the bottom. Um, it has a lip. There's a little raised ring all the way around the outside of the clamp. This is not present on the top. On the top, it just has a bunch of like, um, I th I'm going by memory, maybe it's on there from the video last night, but it was just a bunch of like little ribs. Like the whole length of it was just like little little lines. And it just slid on and off really, really easy. It didn't have a lip for it to grab hold of. So I don't know why Volvo did that just on the bottom and not on the top, but um, hopefully nothing's gone wrong on the top and we're not missing something. All right, three hose clamps out of four on these blue IPD silicone radiator hoses, the upper, which is the um, under pressure, and the return, hot, Hot coming in, under pressure, coming in the radiator, cools down, comes back out of the bottom and back to the engine block on the back near the turbo, or just under just under this air pipe actually. Um, and I got that all tightened up, but I did notice this one and that one were both not as tight as I remember them being. So I'm kind of curious, I mean it was March, it wasn't super warm out, it was kind of chilly. I think I just shot the Volvo Row video that day, actually if I remember correctly. So maybe it just wasn't warm enough, um, but this thing slid on and off really easy. So I'm curious if these silver and blue hose clamps that I got with this kit from IPD, if these are bad and they just loosen up over time, um, which doesn't bode well for this monstrosity that I created sitting down in there. I've tugged on this one really hard. This one still seems tight, but I'm worried about it loosening up on me. Uh, maybe if it loosens up, I can just rotate it around. Uh, we'll see. We'll keep an eye on this thing. I'm gonna keep my wrench set up, that seven millimeter and a knuckle. And a little baby extension are going to stay in the car with me for the next several months as I drive this thing, just in case. I'm going to keep uh, two jugs. That's um, almost eight liters. Uh, I'm going to keep that in the back. That'll be with me. That's uh, seven and a half liters. It'll stay in the back with me. I'll probably keep it on top of the spare tire or something. It'll sneak it in there somewhere. But that's going to stay with me to get me home. Um, it's still full. Um, we'll see what happens. All right, I'm kind of playing with this uh, condenser on the AC. When I was in Texas and then last night when we lost all the antifreeze, driving in 95-98 um, here in Denver. Um, yeah, the air conditioning's working really good on the highway, but not so good at slower speed stop and go. I mean, it's working, but not really, really well. 
So I know it hasn't been recharged for a while, but since I got it in here, I'm just going to play with it for a little bit. I've already played... I'm just taking a... This is from Harbor Freight, just a little 90 degree pick with a little bevel out on the end of it. And I'm just opening these up. So if you notice, I'm going to see... I don't know if this thing will zoom in well or not. It's kind of hard for me to see it. But I've worked from here, about right here. Let's see. Right in this area. On these first one, two, three, four rows. I've come across and opened those up. And then you can compare like from to the right of where I'm at. Look how closed off they are. They're all pinched. So that, yeah, all the way across there. Look how pinched off those are compared to this side. So if you're seeing this video, you know I didn't ruin my condenser. Because um, if I ruined it, I ain't ever going to show anybody. So I've done this one, this one, this one, and this well, right, right here is where I started. So I haven't finished across halfway on this row. But, yeah, so if I come up here, I usually kind of, I stick it in. It's a 90 degree, and I just hold it so I have it perpendicular. You don't have to go in very far because they just get pinched off is all that's happening. Let me see if I can see one and look in the camera at the same time. So I usually I'll stick it in. doesn't have to go in very far because we just got to open it up. And see how they go? I push them down. And then I move over one, push them down, push them down. That one's really opened. Push them down, push them down, push them down. So I push against where it's got a double layer. See here? So the shape comes down, it creates a double layer. This is where the freon's at. I don't want to mess in there. I don't want to poke that. So I push against it so I got a double layer. So you can see that. And I make them use. And then what I do is I go all the way across, push them down, usually. And I just come back through and I start again. And I push them up. And then I gotta reset them on the way down. So look at that. See how much easier that is? Get the bug guts and road debris out of there. But look at that. Look how fast that goes. It's kind of it's tedious, but it's kind of relaxing. So look between there and there. I've opened these up. So now they're U shapes again. And that was pinched. Now it's open. This one pinched. You just kind of keep going across. Kind of work it way. Kind of like tuning it. Just like it's like tuning a bicycle wheel. You just kind of move a little bit. Play a little bit. This one's really bad. It's hard to see with the camera in front of my face. There we go. Got it open. Look at that. That one was that was the worst one we've done so far on this little set that you're watching me with. And then you just kind of plug at it, but don't poke the freon. There we go. Look, see that opened up. Now I gotta reset the bottom. So I go just this little wave. You create this wave pattern back and forth and it'll pinch off again you gotta go back and reset it just get them apart but look we just did from here to there that easy and it's so much better than what it is up above so yeah I've, I've done from about half over because I'm right-handed I didn't have I don't have the uh, the plates off the bottom so usually I'd lay underneath it and reach up through this gap but I'm kind of doing it over the top of the lower lip on the V70R front bumper but uh, yeah it works really well all right, I've done that row. So I've come all the way across. You can see it. It is not perfect, but they're all open. And you can see up above these, they're all closed off. They're all pinched, closed off. I'll come through those. I'll do this other half over here. I just go until my eyes won't focus and my back hurts. And then next time I have it up on ramps. All right, check it out. That's like seven rows, uh, half away across. And I'm done for the day. My eyes aren't focusing anymore and my back hurts. So it's time to take this thing out in the heat of the day, to drive it up Flagstaff Mountain and make sure that hose doesn't pop off and see if we have better AC. All right, YouTube, I've got exactly seven half rows improvement of air conditioning condenser. We are on the road. It's gotta be in the 90s. Just pulled out of the garage. It's already telling me it's 88 outside. So we are on South Boulder Road heading west. We are gonna go drive Flagstaff in the heat with the AC on. I've got two jugs of the good stuff, uh, the Xerox Blue European Volvo Coolant Antifreeze sitting right behind me. Check out the photo. I tried to put them in the bin above the spare tire, but I can't put my cargo tray in there. So they're in the car with me. Got wrenches, got that seven millimeter, a knuckle and a baby extension and the ratchet. The hoses are tight except for the thermostat mount, which I showed you. I messed up how I put that in. So that's going to be a problem at some point. And we're going to drive west and uh, hope the hoses don't pop off. Uh, you'll know if we make it, if I'm suddenly at the top and we're walking around the car. AC is All right, we are driving. It is now 92, it was 93 back there a little bit ago, but came under some cloud cover here, coming into the east side of Boulder on South Boulder Road. 
Um, so yeah, 92 degrees, car is at temp, it's at its normal spot, about a needle, pretty, well actually no, exactly dead center, right in the middle. So it's on its normal operating temperature for the little gauge on the dash, I know that's not super accurate, but it doesn't look abnormal. I do not smell antifreeze, we are going to proceed, and I have exactly seven half rows of improvement in AC, this is miraculous. All right, we're experimenting with a new camera angle here, I can't even see what you can see. But we're starting the climb. This is uh, Gregory Canyon right here. It is still just dropped down to 91 degrees Fahrenheit. We're starting the Flagstaff Road Drive proper, crossing the bridge for Gregory Canyon. Temperature is sitting right at the midpoint. So no big deal. Up, up, up we go. Hey, if you want to check out this video or another video, I think it's the first video I ever shot in Ragnar. Uh, the um, Prancing Moose on Flagstaff video. And then there's a descent video that I shot a couple of years ago playing around with a GoPro on my road bike coming down this little spirited but actually rather tame only past six cars on the way down. So yeah, check that out. That's a lot more fun uh, coming down on a bicycle. Don't do that in the car. Anyway, we are heading up. Um, let's. I'm going to drive out to the uh, Boy Scout Pavilion, I think it's called, at the end of the Flagstaff Road. Out on the edge, we'll pull into a parking spot, we'll open this thing up and we will check how much coolant we still have left. All right, I am at the amphitheater. I'll walk down there in a second and show you what that looks like. But up here at the top of Flagstaff, this wasn't open back in February when I made the uh, Prancing Moose on Flagstaff drive. So check that out on YouTube. You can hear the fans running, the car is off. Um, I look down in there, we do not have any. There is no leakage down below on the lower radiator hose, nothing on the back. The front one is still where I put it. it has not moved. It is still tight, I tugged on it. And we haven't had any changes. It went up just a little bit with some expansion on the um, expansion tank for the coolant. So I think we're good. Um, I did not open it up. We drove up here, what, 20 miles per hour, 2,000, 2,500 RPM max. So it didn't really open it up, create a ton of pressure for the system. Um, maybe I'll open it up on the way home and give it another little uh, test. But I think we're good. I'm going to keep some antifreeze in here. And I think we're good for the Skyline Drive on Saturday with all the Volvo guys. It'll be the perfect group. Volvo Brett's going to be in that group. So, uh... I'm in good hands if this thing blows off again. Hopefully it doesn't throw another conniption fit. All right, I don't know why I called it the Boy Scout Pavilion. Maybe I'm showing my age, but it said the uh, Boulder Flagstaff Nature Center. So that's what that was where I was parked. But yeah, looking out over North Boulder out there. Turn around, you, that's where I was parked back there by the Nature Center. Up there, there's the little picnic tables. Look at this. Three and a half, four miles above Boulder. And if I back up, there's Ragnar parked up here at the Sunrise Amphitheater. I'm gonna scroll up. Ba ding! That's why it's called Flagstaff Mountain. There's the flag. All right, I'm gonna walk out. All right, YouTube, do you hear that? Just in the time it took me to walk down there, and walk back up with you on that video. It wasn't that far, just a little short loop around the flagpole. Yeah, I don't hear it either. I just hear birds chirping. No more fan. She's good. I think we are fine. There's liquid, a spot of something underneath the car. I'll pop the hood, but I don't think that's me. All right, I popped the hood. That was not me. The hose is still on. That is not my coolant. That is whatever that picked up was underneath the car. It was Pull it out of my parking spot. I'm gonna drive back down. Be sure to check out the uh, Prancing Moose on Flagstaff video. That was the first video I shot back in February on a 50 degree day. Uh, yeah, today it's, it's still 89 degrees outside. Heading back down, nice and easy. A little overcast now. Looks like we're gonna get some rain. Let's see if I can get this thing home before that happens. Uh, I'm gonna open it up on the highway and we'll uh, give her a quick boost test and see if we slip that radiator hose off again. All right, welcome back YouTube. I'm on US 36. Uh, unfortunately, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh no, what time is it? It's 4.30 in the afternoon. This clock doesn't work, I always forget that. Um, it's 4.22 in the afternoon. Leaving Boulder's a ton of traffic. So I haven't really been able to open it up. I kind of gave it a little bit of foot coming up the on-ramp at uh, Baseline Road onto US 36, that little short curvy uh, on-ramp there. Pretty much since then, I maybe got it up to 4,500, 4,000 RPM, something like that. 
I haven't really put a ton of boost into it yet. I'm gonna have to jump in the express lane, it looks like, to get this thing opened up. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna climb up the hill towards the Boulder Overlook. Here comes the express lane. All right, here we go. Here we go, here's the foot. 5,000. 10 PSI on the boost. 4,000 RPM. I don't really have enough room to fully open this thing up because I'm catching everybody already. So, yeah. Heading up the hill. We'll see if I get another chance to open this up. Give it some more foot. I mean, that's why we want these cars, right? They're sport wagons. They're fun to drive. The Grand Tour. All right, we're heading up the hill now. Clouds came over behind me. You can see those a little bit. I can see them out the window in the video there. Hey, there you are. Um, yeah, it's uh, 88 degrees now. There's some dark clouds coming over Boulder, but I don't think we're gonna get any rain out of this. Maybe some sprinkles. All right, let's open it up one more time. There it is, nine, eight PSI. That was up to 5,000 RPM when it did the downshift. Still sitting dead center in the middle. And I gotta say, ooh, feel that? That's at least seven half rows of improved AC condenser right there. That is miraculous. And remember, if it's improving the AC condenser, there's more airflow getting to the radiator and the intercooler. So better performance all around. You gotta open up the AC condenser. Air's gotta come through those slats to get to the other two. On the three stack sandwich that's in there. Cause this has a rear mounted intercooler. All right, I think I'm good. I'm gonna stay in the express lane. We're gonna go up to the other exit, but I think we are totally good as long as it doesn't give me a low coolant turn off engine light. All right, next day, um, just so you know, I got home yesterday, everything was fine. Opened this thing up, got up to what? 5,000 RPM, 10 PSI at one point. Um, everything seemed fine. This thing has not moved. It is not budging. It is not loose. No pressure was built up. Um, we're going to call this good. We're going to go on the drive on Saturday. The uh, Skyline Drive down to Canyon City through the foothills. I think we're going through Conifer and Buffalo Park and all that kind of stuff. So this will be fun with the Volvo Group. We'll open it up. I got two cans of coolant uh, and a freeze in the back. Um, so yeah, just in case this pulls apart, I got the right tools to work on this thing with a knuckle and I can get in there good. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm good to go. Today I'm going to work on more of the AC condenser slats and get those little fins opened up and get better airflow for the trip. But other than that, uh, be safe and have fun out there, YouTube. All right, YouTube, my eyes won't focus anymore. I'm sick of looking at this condenser. That's 11 full rows from the bottom, 11 rows up. Straightened out. Is it perfect? No. Is it a hell of a lot more airflow? Yes, that's where most of it's happening especially with this V70R front bumper cover. Uh, back here behind the crash bumper, there's not a lot of airflow and it's pretty okay. And even up here where it has the grill, even though this is mostly open and my fingers go through, it still blocks a lot of the rocks. So um, yeah, it's most of the hits are down here and this thing is looking pretty damn good. That's gotta be at least 10%. I might go even 20% better airflow. But check this out, these things are stronger than you think. Look at this little bottom area right here. It's actually hit something. The entire bottom section there is squished. Um, you can see it's landed on a curb or got pushed somehow, but never leaked. So if these things are stronger, we give them credit for. Be safe out there, YouTube. Uh, see you on the drive right, Saturday. YouTube. Now we hit it with this coil cleaner by Pura Filter 2000 PF. Got this at Home Depot. I think it was about nine bucks a uh, can. Just a little degreaser in here. It's foaming. Let's see if I can look at this. You spray it in there. And we're gonna let it sit. It's safe on these AC coils. It's not gonna etch any of this aluminum. It's actually for home air conditioning systems, but it works great on cars. I found this on YouTube myself. So we're just gonna go back and forth and foam this baby up. Get it in there, that's where most of the airflow, I mean, you can tell from the front of the car, that's where most of it's happening. All right, gotta get low so I can get up in there. Straight across, just this bottom part is where all the, it's from oil on the roads, and then you drive in the rain, it kicks it up and it dries, bug guts. Just a bunch of crud. Just spray the heck out of this damn thing. I'm gonna let it foam. Let it sit. Alright, that's about all I can get there. This car's too low to the ground. It's easier with the cross country.
I just kind of threw here. It does it's non-corrosive, so it's a mild degreaser. And the horns in the way, everything's in the way in there. Latches, but you can just get it in there. Spray the heck out of it. Let it sit. We're gonna blast it with cold water from the hose. And then some uh, compressed air from the uh, compressor. Call it good. All right.